My grandmother wakes up wanting to learn, wanting to discover, wanting to meet new people. I think of her in some ways as the Energizer Bunny. She's a very remarkable woman. She has a healthy curiosity about almost everything. I'm Catherine Davis and I was born in Philadelphia in 1907, a long time ago. I got interested in Jim Watson's endeavors because I thought he was on the path to cure a lot of diseases. She's a big supporter of uh, Greg Hound here at the lab. Greg's unusual, he's ahead of his time. I wanted to help with the breast cancer cure because two of my sisters, had breast cancer, and so it seemed a natural that I should give something towards that. I like the man who's been working on RNAi, and I think he should get a Nobel Prize for what he's done. I feel very fortunate that she chose to try to make an impact here at Cold Spring Harbor. Conceptually, RNAi is very similar to the immune system. The immune system recognizes foreign invaders and somehow adapts to their attack we could potentially harness RNAi as a therapeutic tool by tricking this system into shutting down genes that are specifically required for um, the viability of, let's say, cancer cells versus normal cells. Mrs. Davis's contributions to RN research efforts have certainly made RNAi research at Cold Spring Harbor move much, much more quickly. They've let us pursue avenues that would have been difficult to fund in other ways. I hope I'm ahead of the curve, and I hope it's a very important curve that will end by delivering human beings from so many diseases in a fast and harmless way. And that's what I want to do, and I hope I'm doing it by helping RNAi. I leave it in the hands of the scientists continue plowing their way towards that end. She strives to understand. She tr strives to make sure that she pushes us in directions that will have immediate impact. And this sets her apart, uh, apart from her generosity, this sets her apart from many generous people who will fund our efforts, who don't take that personal interest. If I was to think of one story that to me captures her attitude, it was when she asked, and probably in her 90s, uh, asked for a ride on a motorcycle I had at the time. And as she was putting on the helmet, I giggled because I thought she looked so silly. And she gave me a little bit of a stern look and said, why are you laughing? I said, well, you look ridiculous with this huge helmet on your small frame. And she said, you know, Chris, you're gonna miss out on a lot of life if you worry so much about how you look or what other people think. I think seeing Mrs. Davis and how she lives her life has made us even more adventurous in terms of starting new projects, becoming interested in new areas, pushing in different directions. She's just promoted a lot of good activities and helped fund uh, people doing better things with their lives and our, ourselves doing better science. She's unusual, you know. Over a hundred, you don't find many people over a hundred who still want to change the world. People like Mrs. Davis keep us focused on doing things that are important.